from the section of the breast, we are going to discuss the fibrocystic changes, which are the benign epithelial lesions. They were previously known as fibrocystic disease. But in order to differentiate them from the carcinoma, they are now termed as fibrocystic changes or benign epithelial lesions. Fibrocystic changes is basically derived from the two words fibro for the fibrosis because there occurs the increase in the development of the stroma that is the fibrostroma or the connective tissue development in the breast parenchyma and cystic for the cyst formation because there is the appearance of the fluid filled cavities that are lined by the epithelium. Fibrocystic changes are mostly seen in the premenopausal woman because there occurs the changes in the estrogen level that may cause the development of the fibrocystic changes in the breast. The fibrocystic changes may occur because of the cyclic changes in the breast during menstrual cycle. As I have clearly told you, this may occur because of the changes in the level of the estrogen. But estrogen therapy and the oral contraceptive do not seem to increase the incidence of the fibrocystic changes. Rather, the oral contraceptive may decrease the risk of the fibrocystic changes development. Here you can clearly see in the picture, this is the normal breast in which you can clearly see the lobule and the terminal duct which are combining to form the main duct and this is the abnormality that is the fibrocystic changes. Here you can clearly see the cyst development. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six cysts are developed in the lobule or the terminal duct of the breast. And this is the major site for the fibrocystic changes development, that is the lobule and the terminal duct. According to the risk of developing breast cancer, the benign epithelial lesion is divided into the two types. And the one is non-proliferative type of the benign epithelial lesion and the other is proliferative type of the benign epithelial lesion. The non-proliferative type of the benign epithelial lesion is not associated with the breast cancer development, while the proliferative type of the benign epithelial lesion is associated with the increased risk of the breast cancer development. It is further divided into the two types that is the proliferative type of the benign epithelial lesion with atypia and the proliferative type of the benign epithelial lesion without atypia. In proliferative type with atypia, there are four to five times increase in risk of developing breast cancer. While in proliferative type without atypia, there are 1.5 to two times increase in the risk of cancer development. The proliferative type with atypia is further divided into the two types that is the ductal proliferative benign epithelial lesion with atypia and the lobular proliferative benign epithelial lesion with atypia. The term fibrocystic change is used for the type, the non-proliferative type of the benign epithelial lesion. They appear as the lumpy bumpy breast. It is because the lump appears most commonly in the upper outer quadrant and it feels like there is something in the breast that is the breast become bulky. The non-proliferative type of the benign epithelial lesion is most common type in the female so we will discuss it in detail. The proliferative type is of no significance or less significance as it is associated with the carcinoma development. In the non-proliferative type of the benign epithelial lesion, there occurs the apocrine metaplasia of the epithelial cells in the breast. While in the proliferative type without atypia, there is epithelial hyperplasia which appears as the double layers of the epithelial cells. While in proliferative type with atypia, there appears the atypical cells that are clonal cells and that divide and may cause the increase in the risk of the carcinoma development. Right now, we will discuss the non-proliferative type of the benign epithelial lesion, which is the most important type, while the proliferative type of the benign epithelial lesion with atypia and without atypia will be discussed in the different lecture. On gross morphology, fibrocystic change is characterized by blue dome cysts. There occurs the formation of small cysts, which then combine and form the large cysts. These cysts are filled with turbid semi-translucent fluid of a brown or blue color. This actually make the cyst blue dome in appearance on gross morphology. These cysts disappear on fine needle aspiration. This is the major differentiating feature of fibrocystic changes. The fibrocystic changes are also characterized by the fibrosis. These fluid fills cysts when ruptured, they will release the secreting material that will lead to the chronic inflammation this chronic inflammation will ultimately result into the fibrous stroma formation. There also occurs the adenosis. The adenosis means there is an increase in the number of SNI per lobule. The areas of the fibrocystic change appear as ill-defined, diffusely discrete densities and discrete nodularities on mammogram. You may also see 
the calcifications on the mammogram. This is a picture taken from the Robbins pathology. In the mammogram, you can clearly see the discrete nodules of the fibrocystic changes and these are the calcification. These are the rounded calcification. You can clearly appreciate them. Here in another picture, you can differentiate the blue dome appearance of the cyst. This is the main point of gross morphology of the fibrocystic changes. This is another picture taken from the internet. You can clearly appreciate, you can clearly differentiate the blue dome appearance of the cyst. This is another picture taken from the Robbins pathology. You can clearly see the blue dome appearance of the cyst, the blue dome appearance of the cyst. And these white areas are actually the fibrose areas. These are actually the foci of the fibrosis. In different sections, you can clearly see the areas of the fibrosis. In this section, you can clearly see the empty cyst, which may be resulted because of the rupturing of the blue dome cyst. On histopathology, the blue dome cysts that are formed in the fibrocystic chain are actually lined by the metaplastic apocrine cells or flattened atrophic epithelium. There occurs the metaplasia of the normal epithelium of the terminal duct or the acini of the breast or the lobule of the breast. These metaplastic apocrine cells are different from the normal epithelium. They have the abundant pink cytoplasm and rounded nuclei. On histological picture, you may also see the calcifications in the lumen which appear as a purplish mass. On histology slides, you may also see fibrosis which is a fibrous stroma formation or connective tissue development in the breast parenchyma. Or you may also see the adenosis which is the increase in the number of SNI per lobule. Before heading towards the histological slides of the fibrocystic changes, let me discuss the normal epithelium of the SNI of the breast. The normal epithelium of the SNI of the breast consists of the two types of the cells myoepithelial cells, these are the myoepithelial cells, and the luminal cells. The myoepithelial cells consist of the dark compact nuclei with the scanty cytoplasm, while the luminal cells consist of the large nuclei with the small nuclei and the abundant cytoplasm. The myoepithelial cells form a single layer while the luminal cells form another single layer. This is the lumen of the SNI of the breast. This is a picture taken from the Robbins pathology. A picture from the Robbins pathology have clearly shown you the fibrocystic changes in the breast. In this, the cyst is formed that is lined by the metaplastic apocrine cells. These are the metaplastic apocrine cells. As I have already told you, these metaplastic apocrine cells consist of the abundant cytoplasm, abundant pink cytoplasm with the rounded nuclei. Here, these are the rounded nuclei. And in the lumen, you can clearly see the purplish masses. These purplish masses are actually the calcifications on the secretory debris. This is a picture from the pathoma and you can clearly see the abundant pinkish cytoplasm of the metaplastic apocrine cells and these are the rounded nuclei with the small nuclei in it. These all are the metaplastic apocrine cells lining the cyst. This is another picture from the Robbins pathology and these are the dilated ducts producing the microcysts. Here is the large cyst which is lined by the metaplastic apocrine cells. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you will find this video helpful, productive and practical. Hey warriors, be productive. And like, share and comment the video. Subscribe my YouTube channel and press the bell icon so that you will never miss any update from Morphopath.